Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do um, the regular weekly um, meditative reamble through the colours. Um, I'm going to use my Kuretake paints and I'm going to start off by showing you um, the <laughs> amazingly non-technical way in which I um, begin by selecting my colours. And today we're going to be doing a watery theme. So, and I'm going to stick to greens and blues. So first of all, I've got my Kuretake Art Nouveau set here which has got a few um, nice, look at them, aren't they beautiful? Um, a few nice subtle greens in it. Um, it's got their names on the back. Uh, so that's green gray, so that classifies as a green. So those are the greens. And then we've also got here a nice gray blue, uh, bluish, grayish blue it says, grayish blue, so we'll put that there too. Um, this one, I think, is green, so it's billiard green, that's a dark green, a bit like forest gump green. Uh, pea green, that's another one. Then this one is on the yellow side. This is saffron yellow, but it's greenish. So I think that qualifies because we might want some light under the water. Um, this one is green gold. So by virtue of its name, I suppose that belongs as well. So it's amazing out of that whole set, uh, about two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, almost half of them are on the green-blue spectrum. I'm just going to check what this one is because you can't tell. That's shadow green. So there we are, one more, and uh, they fit in there. So that's 11 out of 24 on the grey-blue spectrum starting with the darkest colour down here. So then the next thing to do is to do that, to arrange them in um, in order of darkness. So going from the darkest down the bottom here, this is, these are about the same tonally. These are darker, obviously that one might be darker than that one. So we can see, you know, people talk about tone and um, lightness and darkness, and you can practice that. These are about the same, aren't they? Different colours, but the same level of darkness, really. And that one too. Uh, this one's a bit lighter. That one's lighter still. This one belongs... I think we'll pop that one in there, because it's about the same as those. And these two are lighter. That's the lightest of all. So with any luck, we'll be able to squeeze those all in to this... Uh, tray here, just about, just about. I don't know, would it be better without the foam underneath? Doesn't make much difference, I'll take the foam away, I think. Will I? Maybe I won't. Um, hey, yeah, I will. Um, okay, and now turning to the big Kuretake set, we've got another exciting set of greens here. So we'll pull all of these out. This doesn't mean to say, what's this, this one? This is number 57. Now I have to go to the chart because um, this set doesn't have the names written on the back. This set does. So number 57 is turquoise green deep. So that's definitely a color that we want. So we'll just pull all of these out. And we'll put the palette in there like that. Now, the reason for separating them from the warmer tones is so that I don't accidentally let myself get distracted into the wrong colours. Um, and I'm going to find my paper now. Now, for these paintings that I've been doing, I'm using um, this Etcher 
block. Oh, there's a painting in here. So shall we take that out? I can show you how to cut it out. If I can find my thingy whatnot. Just find something with a blade, slide it in that gap and go around the whole thing, separating it from the one beneath. Come on. Oh, too much glue there. Right, so you can go away. Now we are ready to start. And I'm going to use a biggish kind of brush. Let's find a biggish brush. Not too big because I want to be able to vary the colors a bit. Let's try this one. What's this? Pro Art, made in England. Synthetic Sable. Let's try that. You can see most of my colors there. And um, yeah, so we're just going to do a ramble. And like I did before, we'll start with um, something light. Put a couple of areas of light color in. But we want to pretty quickly switch from the, the uh, yellowish tone to, um, to bluish. And while we're doing this, we're thinking sea and fish and not trying to control too much what happens. Let's make this um, it's a, a random thing. You know how eeny, meeny, makaraka, farewell, dominaka, om, pom, push? Just whatever. Whatever draws your eye, whatever draws your brush. Greens and blues, maybe we'll have a bit more dark, perhaps this one. I think um, something really, really dark around the edges, perhaps. I don't know, try not to, I'm telling myself, try not to control what happens, just, just go for the flow. What's this? That's purple. I'm not sure about that one. I think that shouldn't be there. <laughs> Come out. Um, turquoises, turquoises, this one. And now I definitely need something darker. Dark, dark, dark. Mixing them up. So once we've covered the whole thing, The dark green down here. Ah, phthalo blue. Yes, that's what I was looking for. A nice phthalo blue. I'm put plenty of that in. And thinking about, um, I'm going to slow down a little bit now because I want to give some impression of seaweed. So we'll do some sort of squirrely things like this. Yeah, just on the borders and we leave this whole center area nice and light like that and that's where we're going to put fish and embellishments and gold and things like that. So now that has to dry 
And I'm hoping that being as this is Kuretake colour, it'll dry pretty close to the colour that it is while it's wet. I know that I, I was tempted this morning to use my Winsor & Newton Shrinker Daniel Smith colours, but I decided against it in the end because I remembered that the main reason why I like these colours is that they dry the same as they are when they go on the paper. And that's a huge thing. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to find my gold paint. Um, I've got three sets, I think, of gold. Somewhere here, there's another one. Yeah, I've got three sets and they're all good. Let me put this out of the way while it dries. Um, if you haven't yet bought a set of gold colours, then these are three that I can personally recommend. I know there are lots of others, but these three I have and I have used. As you can see, this one's been quite well used. This is nearly gone, nearly gone, nearly gone. And because that had nearly been used up, I decided to get this one. This is Kuretake Starry Colours, as recommended by um, Emma Lefebvre a long time ago. About three years ago, I think it was, when I, before, I, before I had started the channel, um, my channel, I was in Spain for the winter, which was nice. This was before the pandemic. Not long before the pandemic, actually. And I'd taken my paints all down there. And um, to pass some time, I was painting Christmas cards. And I thought, oh, I think I'll go on YouTube and see if I can get some ideas. I'd never used YouTube before, ever. Um, except once to find out how to cut my daughter's hair. And um, so I went on and looked for Christmas cards and came across Emma Lefebvre. And I copied one of her designs and she had used this paint. I think she drew a border around the outside of the card. I think it, I think it was her. It might've been Ellen Crimmy Trent, who I also used for inspiration that year. And then I thought to myself after a while, after having done that for a bit, I think I could do this. I think I could have a channel. And, you know, then the pandemic hit and we lost our business in England. And so me and Tamsin, we said, well, what we'll do then is we'll start a YouTube channel. And that's how it all happened. So Emma, thank you for inspiring me and Ellen, come to that. And uh, all the others that are out there, Harriet and Paul Clark, um, you were all my models. This is the um, set by Colliery, I think it is. Uh, gold, what's it called? Colliero, Colliero. Made in Germany, very similar, can't really tell the difference. This is the newer one. I think it's a little bit more expensive than the starry colours. And then there's this one, which is Etcher from Australia. Um, what I don't like about this is that the pans are too small for my liking. Um, but the colours are very good. So if you paint delicately or you only ever use small brushes, this one would be absolutely fine. Um, and uh, I do use that. But I think this is my one of choice at the moment, only because it's not worn out. The other one, the historic colours are also very, very good. So let's put some water on here. There we are, just some spray water to let that soften up because that does need to sit for a bit. We'll be using that. And we get towards the end. Okay. So now we want to go back to the painting that we just started. Okay, so that's dry and uh, it's not bad. It's dried a tiny bit lighter than it was when it was wet, but still pretty um, vibrant colours. And uh, so the next step, you've got various different things that we could do next. Um, so it's not exactly because this is, you know, follow the flow, go, go with the flow. Um, I think I will, um, I think I'm going to open the door. Just a sec. So that you can hear the birds outside and possibly the sheep and the other animals because spring has sprung the grasses are is. I wonder where the birdies is. The birdies, some say the birds are on the wing. I say the wing is on the bird. Strangest thing I ever heard. 
That's an old rhyme that my parents used to say to me when I was a child. I don't know why. <clears throat> anyway, so let's draw some um, seaweed and let's just do some lovely curly seaweedy lines like this. Something like that. And then on this side, similarly, um, let's go from here. There we are. And maybe we'll bring one. I'll tell you what, we might have some fronds coming up the back here like this, and you do whatever you fancy. There we are. And then what I might do now is find a brush smaller brush perhaps and just come in with some darker green perhaps and make these a bit darker. I don't have to do that but this will probably make them stand out a bit better. This is, I think this is phthalo blue but any darkish Colour. This might not be a good idea. It might work out, might turn out that it was not a good idea, but I don't know. We'll see. And then we'll just keep in it loose. Keeping it loose. Plenty of water, letting it run. Because it's a watery environment, isn't it? Uh, maybe we'll do something similar over the other side, but with a slightly different colour. This is more of a green, that was more of a blue. Whatever you do, don't worry about going over the edges. It just looks better that way. So I've dried that off. Um, I will be coming back and doing more embellishment on the seaweed. We won't be leaving it quite like that. But uh, first of all, I'm going to draw in um, a couple of fish. There's a fish here. I've suddenly seen that. So we can put him in like this. Uh, and um, mouth, eye, and tail. This one fish. And um, he'll have scales and things like that. And then is there another fish somewhere around already, maybe visible? That one was obvious. There's one here, I think. So we'll put another one in here. OK, 
Okay, maybe shall we put the tail in front? I think probably best like that. Okay, so that's, those are our two big fish. And um, let's see, let's uh, do some scales. I don't know what color to do them in. Maybe I'll do them in. Um, let's put some white, some gold in his eye and his mouth. Can you hear the pigeons? We've got more birds here than ever before. Unbelievable. I'm going to paint this fish a little bit, I think. And paint some gold stripes on its tail. And then I'm going to do some blobs of gold on its body. I'm not going to spend a hundred years doing individual scales. You can. I have to consider the video. So we'll just do blobs of paint here. <clears throat> and I might uh, give him a bit more realism with. And then I think I'll go over the line. a goldfish and even if it does if it's not what you had that you in your mind that you were going to do don't worry about that it it will happen because this is not what I had in mind I didn't have this in mind at all um, but now I'm quite happy this the gold paint this col colero is quite opaque reasonably opaque so it sort of goes over any lines that you've drawn and gives you a nice effect. Okay. Two goldfish. We can make the eyes bigger. I, I've made this one's eye too small, but I can make that bigger. And put a bit more silver in there. Okay, and then I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn all of these little gaps here into little fish. And put some more in. I'll come back and do their tails and everything else in a minute. And uh, just scatter them around. I think I need a smaller brush. Lots of little fish swimming around. And then perhaps we can do some nice embellishment on the seaweed.
Well, spring has sprung and yesterday the sun came out for the first time this year, enough that we were able to have the door open and let the air into the house without freezing to bits. And of course, then the sun shines on everything and you think, oh no, everything has got so dirty over the winter. So the spring cleaning starts. So yesterday I was, I started with the studio, I haven't done much. I had one shelf that was completely overloaded with all sorts of rubbish. So I found myself another shelf and tidied it up. I'm going over the white, I don't know why. So now I'm going to put some scales on this fish. I want this to be sort of uh, rustic, rough and ready. Don't want it to be picture perfect. There we are, that's better. And uh, let's do the same to this one, but I need to make his eye bigger. i do that. There we are. And then, okay, I always get this the wrong way around, don't I? So it's this way around. Okay, those fish are now fished out of nowhere. Um, okay, so then let's see whether we need to give these any kind of outline, I think so, to make them a little bit more alive. little mouths. By the way, if anybody wants to buy any of the paintings from these videos, by any remote chance, um, just drop me an email at Diane Anton, uh, no, sorry, at studio, studio at dianeanton.com. The details are in the description below. Um, we're selling them for $50 each, including postage. And a uh, special offer because we've just gone over 100,000 subscribers. And I, I think we've sold about 40 paintings, but there's still lots left because we've got about five or six hundred um, in the on 
YouTube, we've done quite a lot. I'm giving them some patterns on them. And the swallows, which I did the other day, that one, two people have bought that painting. I've done it twice. So, and I can do that if anyone wants anything. You can always ask. Some of them I can redo because I've done them before. And the swallows is one. I can always paint those five swallows for anyone who wants it. The swallows are back. It's so funny, I have to tell you, the day that I painted those swallows, they arrived back in our garden. And they're, I think they're early this year. I think they're early. I think they heard me talking about them and they said, oh, let's go down there to Lemburel. We've got a nice nest zone there where we can go. They nest in the barn with the chickens. They usually raise two, if not three, broods every year. We cut a hole in the door so that they can get in and out because we used to have to wait up for them at night until they'd gone into their bedroom. Um, then we could close the door on the chickens. We have to keep the door closed because you never know. We don't have very many foxes here, um, although I expect if we left the door open, that would be the one day that foxes would arrive. We do have wolves though, not absolutely on our doorstep, but just up the road, about 10 miles from here, they've been spotted in the um, Mont d'Arrée. They have arrived here, they've crossed over the whole of France, and now they're here. It's funny really, because a few years ago, I said to various people, are there wolves in the Mont d'Arrée? I think there are. I have a feeling that there are wolves here, because ever since I watched Dr. Zhivago as a child, and the wolves were howling in the distances they were at um, in their so-called summer house. You remember the bit in Dr. Zhivago where they go out to the countryside, Varinko or something it was called. And uh, the first night they're there, the wolves are howling. Um, yes. Anyway, I think that kind of stuck in my mind. That did, and I've always been afraid of wolves. So when we came to live here, and I got the feeling that there might be wolves in the forest up there, I thought, oh my gosh. Anyway, it turns out there were, and there are, and they've been breeding. That's fine, as long as they keep away from my sheep. I'm doing lots of little uh, parallel lines now, at the moment, here. I don't know why, why not? Seems to be a thing that people do on their paintings these days. Yes, and it turns out that my painting, the last one, the very last one I did was a sort of summer garden thing with lots of kind of watercolour flowers and birds, not birds, um, butterflies, bees, um, what do you call them? Um, ladybirds and things like that. And someone said, Oh, that reminds me of the king's invitation to the coronation. And I'm like, what? Everyone's going to think I copied it, but I didn't. I didn't even know that. And so I went and had a look. I have to say, I mean, it's very pretty, but is that really? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem very monarchical. I'm not sure about the green man. I thought he was supposed to be in charge of the Church of England. I didn't realise he was... Well, I did know he was kind of pagan. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but I know, I do know that um, when he was Prince Charles, young, <coughs> excuse me, much younger, <coughs> he was initiated into the um, Order of the Bard in, uh, in Wales. You know, he became a, a Druid, I do believe. And there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. So 
That might be why we have the green man there. I can put Finn here. I don't know. The world's a funny place. But there's a lot of good things about it too. Okay, and now, so um, let me think. I think we probably need some more seaweed in the background, don't we? So let's get back my colors. Colour should we put in the background we want? Greenish. Um, Just dabbing at that to make it sort of disappear into the background. It's just really to give it a bit more texture. It doesn't all have to be green. We can have some blue. I like this greyish blue. Kind of shadowy and probably want some shadowy look. But you have to be careful with it a little bit because it can be a bit opaque. I need to make that a bit bigger. Okay, and um, I'm going to do some distant dots of gold. You could actually think of them as being bubbles if you did them in streams going upwards, like that. And if you, you know, you don't have to use a pen to make these little dots, you can just use the tip of your brush like that. I'm still using this Pro Art brush, I think. Oh no, I've switched to a draw well. Okay, the details for those brushes are also in the description below. They come from Japan. They're very, very inexpensive. Even with the shipping, you could order a lifetime supply for... A couple of people have told me that they've lashed out and spent $100 on brushes and they've got the complete set of all the different types. They do four different types. And um, so that's a really, really, really good price. Okay, um, yeah, I want to put a little bit more um, bluish behind this fish here to make it stand out a bit better. And perhaps 
some more gold here. And we could have um, some pebbles down here. These are not dead fish, they're just gold coloured pebbles to give, give it a little bit of, I don't know, bottom of a tank or something, optional. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Okay, so something I've done off camera just now is I've gone over the black lines that I had done, sorry, the white lines and the black lines come to that, that I had done, which I didn't like. Uh, I decided I didn't like those lines in the end, so I've covered them over with gold. So just to let you know that that's something you can definitely do. If you've got one of these gold pens, it's just a Signo Uniball gold pen. And um, the beauty of these paints also is that they are opaque. So if you want to bring in some lights, you can always pick up some light color like this blue and just add a few strands of um, seaweed in the distance, ones that are catching the light and therefore appear lighter and just kind of cover up anything that you don't think worked out very well and um, or just add some embellishments if you feel that way inclined. Um, we can put for example more blue dots around here to go with the gold I suppose. We can put spirals and things like that out here if you want. playing around really. And uh, I think I've got to the point here now where I'm probably going to more or less call it a day. Maybe I'll put some little blue fish in the distance. Just a few tiny ones. You could put other creatures in as well, obviously. It's just a game, it's just a play, it's just fun. It's just fun. And there we are, I think that's probably good enough for now. So I will let me say goodbye and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, we've got lots of shorts, actually, before you go. Um, a lot of our uh, two, two pieces of news, actually, that I should have said at the beginning. We're going to be doing a live soon. So we'll be letting you know when that's going to happen and you'll be able to tune in and listen to me rambling live and hopefully responding to some of your comments live. Um, not sure if that's going to interest people or not, but we are being told it's a good thing to do and that people do enjoy it. So we'll do that soon. And um, the other thing is um, the shorts. Don't imagine that we're ever going to stop doing the full length videos, but um, YouTube does like us to do shorts. The shorts are glimpses usually of videos that we've either already done or we're going to do soon. And um, so when you see a short, often you'll find that if you click on the, um, uh, the name of the studio at the bottom, it'll take you to the full length version, almost always, or if not, it'll say coming soon or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's what the shorts are all about. They're, it's basically advertising, you know? Uh, for YouTube, and they they have their funny little ways. Um, 
I'm not, I, I don't know. Sometimes the shorts can be quite informative. I watch other people's. I watch, um, what's his name? Um, f- French with Alex. He's a French guy who teaches French, oddly enough. And I watch that and I watch um, um, Dylan Hollis and people like that. Um, because it's it's quite fun and when you just got a couple of minutes to kill and you haven't got anything to read, sometimes it's quite nice to... Anyway, so I'm now rambling and I'll let you go and uh, I will see you in the next video. So have fun with this one, enjoy and um, happy Easter, everyone. Underwater adventure. So bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you soon.